our compute infrastructure is how we drive and sustain these advances. And tensor processing units are a big part of that. Today, I'm excited to announce our next generation, the TPU V4. These are powered by the V4 chip, which is more than twice as fast as the V3 chip. TPUs are connected together into supercomputers called pods. A single V4 pod contains 4,096 V4 chips. And each pod has 10x the interconnect bandwidth per chip at scale compared to any other networking technology. This makes it possible for a TPU V4 pod to deliver more than one exaflop, 10 to the 18th power floating point operations per second of computing power. Think about it this way. If 10 million people were on their laptops right now, then all of those laptops put together would almost match the computing power of one exaflop. This is the fastest system we have ever deployed at Google and a historic milestone for us. Previously, to get an exaflop, you needed to build a custom supercomputer. But we already have many of these deployed today. And we'll soon have dozens of TPU v4 pods in our data centers, many of which will be operating at or near 90% carbon-free energy. And our TPU v4 pods will be available to our cloud customers later this year. It's tremendously exciting to see the space of innovation. As we look further into the future, there are types of problems that classical computing will not be able to solve in a reasonable time. Quantum computing represents a fundamental shift because it harnesses the properties of quantum mechanics and gives us the best chance of understanding the natural world. Achieving our quantum milestone was a tremendous accomplishment, but we are still at the very beginning of a multi-year journey. One problem we face today is that our physical qubits are very fragile. Even cosmic rays from outer space can destroy quantum information. To solve more complex problems, our next milestone is to create an error-corrected logical qubit. It's simply a collection of physical qubits stable enough to hold quantum information for a long period of time. We start by reducing the error rate of our physical qubits, then combining a thousand physical qubits to create a single logical qubit, and then scaling that up to a thousand logical qubits, at which point we will have created an error-corrected quantum computer. Today, we are focused on enabling scientists and developers to access beyond classical computational resources, but we hope to one day create an error-corrected quantum computer. And success could mean everything from increasing battery efficiency to creating more sustainable energy to improved drug discovery and so much more. The roadmap begins in our new data center, which we are calling the Quantum AI Campus. Let's step inside. Michael, are you there? Hey, Sundar, how's it going? Yeah, I'm here and I'm excited to learn why I'm here and I'm guessing that's why he's here. Hey, Michael. Hey. I'm Eric, lead engineer here. I'd like to welcome you to one of the most powerful quantum computing facilities in the world. Oh, thank you, thank you. What's this, can I touch it? Uh, yeah, that's a quantum processor. And inside are these actual physical qubits. Oh, hey, little guy. Qubits are the fundamental building blocks of quantum computers, but they're incredibly fragile. Oh. Even the tiniest particles can disrupt their operation. Right. Which is why we work so hard to create the optimal environment to keep them stable. Right, and I'm guessing the optimal environment doesn't include, like, Cheeto dust. So I'm just uh, going to put this no, puppy right it back. Thanks. Let me show you where the clean ones go. Cool. So we built this campus to inspire all of our quantum mechanics and to show the world what the future of computing looks like. Good for you, dude. Look at you, dude. Thanks. That's a cool lamp. Uh, it's not a lamp. This is actually a cryostat, and you're looking at the inside of a quantum computer. Wow, cryostat. I love that word, cryostat. I'm guessing people want to know, what makes a cryostat a cryostat? Eric? Well, everything you see here, from the wiring to the aluminum, copper, and gold metal stages, have been chosen to create a cold and quiet environment for our quantum processors to operate. Right, right, right. And in English? Uh, it's a fridge for our qubits. Right, right. And how cold are we talking about? Uh, we approach near absolute zero, mm. 10 millikelvin to be precise. Wow. Which means that Parts of our lab are some of the coldest places in the universe. Wow, colder than Canada? Uh, yeah, colder than Canada. Colder than Canada. 
Well, it's not just temperature that's important. In fact, we want to remove all distractions from our Cubase. Right. Including unwanted electrical and magnetic signals. Yeah, yeah. Who wants that, right? Well, let me show you what the final product looks like. Is this a cryostat? Uh, no, that's not a cryostat. What about this? Is this a cryostat? That's not a cryostat. No? This is a cryostat. Nice. In fact, this is a fully assembled quantum computer. Yeah? So where's the keyboard? Uh, well, there's no keyboard, but it contains everything you've just seen inside and custom control electronics, all of which were designed and built by our team here at Google. Wait, 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 wait. Is this a Bob Ross? Is he on the team? Tell me he's on the team. He's not on the team. OK. But, but this mural is our homage to Mother Nature. See, quantum is the language of nature, and we're learning to speak it here. It will enable us to run precise simulations of the natural world, unlocking answers that would otherwise remain unknown. OK, so let me see if I get this right. OK, so these qubits are really smart, right? But they're really picky about their work environment. So you've got to put them in a lamp, right? But even then, they're like, no, I don't want anybody eating any Cheetos around me. And they're like, I'm sorry, OK, I didn't know, right? So then you've got to wrap them in like this Bob Ross blanket of love, right? And then you keep them there until they can tell us how to think like the Earth. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. Okay, you know what this is? This is the power button, and I want to well, start it. I, I'm, we're not quite there yet. I'm glad you're on board. Okay. To date, we've reached the first milestone beyond classical computational capabilities. This is us. Yeah, we're here. Everything you've seen here today is what we're using to build to our next milestone, an error-corrected logical qubit. Right. And from there, We'll tile thousands of those together to reach our ultimate goal, an error-corrected quantum, quantum computer. computer. Right. That's my goal, too. Well, you're in luck. We're building a team to assemble all the right ingredients all right here in the Quantum AI campus that you just helped us unveil. So thank you very much, Michael. Uh, no, you know what? Thank you, and thank you for everyone uh, that's joining us. Uh, I want to leave you with a couple of my favorite words that I just learned, uh, one of them being qubits, cute qubits, uh, cryostat, right, and melon chilies. Sundar, it was a pleasure doing science with you.